started out, I was very small for my age. And because of that, I got picked on a lot. You know, because just because I was small. Uh, one story, one case in point is we moved into this new neighborhood and this kid came over to, a whole bunch of guys came over to where me and my brother were. And so the tallest kid in the crowd looked at me, he said, hey boy, what's your name? And I said, Sam. Looked up at him. He's looking down at me. He says, how old are you? I said, 12. And he says, well, no, you ain't. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I knew I was 12. Then he says, like, you want to fight? I'm like, well, not really. So it was problematic being small. Then I watched one of the early masters, Master Jerry Durant at the time. He was a small white guy. And I watched him get a lot of respect. I said, wouldn't that be nice? You know, I see a little man getting respect. Um, that made me approach him to see if he would teach me. He took me and introduced me to my teacher, Master Art Sykes. And uh, he said, I got just a man for you because he wasn't training anybody at that time. Um, so we go up there and I heard Art Sykes' name. It was legendary. I never knew him, <clears throat> never saw him. But I heard the name, it was out there, Art Sykes, Sunny Sykes, Art Sykes. So I'm like, okay. Uh, we went, and he took me in. He says, hey, Art, I got a good man here for you. And one of my first thoughts was, he's kind of small. <laughs> you know, so my concept of him was way out of proportion. So, you know, being small doesn't necessarily have to be a detriment. And so I joined his class and been involved ever since knowing from my teacher and also reading the history that wherever I was at, there was more. So I couldn't accept myself where I was at, you know? So that kind of kept me striving for more. Other than that, I would like stagnate and just say, well, here I am, uh, I'm done, and, and not go any further. But uh, there was always a reason to go further. Carlos Castaneda. I read that book many years ago, sure. and this was my first encounter with this information. Because in that book, he said man has four natural enemies. Well, nobody ever told me that. I never heard that before. The first of which is fear. That, that added up. <laughs> the second one was clarity because you could tend to learn to see things clearly and then think nobody can tell you anything anymore. The third natural enemy was power. Because what a man does with power, if and when he has it, says a lot about his character and his nature. And the last natural enemy is old age. Uh, we're all headed that way. <laughs> But I thought it was interesting to have those categories, you know, and, and how they alluded to one's journey through life, perhaps. And your biggest test and your biggest enemy is yourself. Because when you go out there and you're in that ring and you're standing face to face with a man that you ain't ever seen before, <laughs> and you're getting ready to throw punches and kicks at each other, the body and the mind and the emotions go through all kind of chaos and turmoil. And you have to conquer all of that, you know, and then try to have to conquer him. <laughs> so they're built in. I've been here all my life and I've seen Erie go from bustling and industrious down to almost like a ghost town. And it seems to still be going that, in that direction. Um, hopefully there'll be a turnaround don't know that there will be, but one thing for certain, two things for sure, things have changed a lot. You know, it changed a lot from the time we were growing up, uh, the experiences we had a kid, as kids, and the experience the kids have today. They're so much different uh, than when we were coming up. We could really say those were the good old days. You know, I have two students in particular who have done particularly well for themselves. One is Master Danny Harris, the other one is Master David Tate. Uh, these two gentlemen started with me a long time ago and, and they're still with me and they're still perpetuating the arts. And, and 
I'm proud to have been a part of that, and I'm proud to be able to see that. You know, there, there's been a lot of students along the way that martial arts has impacted their lives, and I know that through conversation. But uh, as far as the two best in excelling, that would be Master Danny Harris and Master David Tate. Well, I think if, if, if people got involved, not necessarily in my art form, and, and something that when you go in, you have no idea what it's really all about. You have a pretty narrow concept of, well, this is this and that is that. But once you get into it, you can realize that it's much, much, much more than that. And I, I think that just makes life interesting. One, two, three.